I recently made a video breaking down how much money I made buying and selling Lego over the last four years. However, after looking back on that time, I realised I'm actually pretty bad at making decisions about what set to buy. Now, I'm a software engineer, so I'm used to solving problems, and it got me thinking, if I'm so bad at choosing, perhaps I could build an app that will predict future values of sets, and that should tell me what to buy. That's exactly what I did, and in this video I'm going to break down how it works and how you can start using it. Hello, I'm Chris Passel, and like I said, I spent the last four years buying and selling Lego, and I definitely missed out on some fantastic sets in that time that are now incredibly valuable. For example, when I first started to get into buying Lego, I, I remember seeing the Joker Manor set on sale for £179, just before it was due to retire, and that set is now worth £430. However, I didn't buy it, and instead I spent that money on the Silent Mary, which has still increased in price to around £300, but if you consider those two options, I definitely made the wrong choice. Or I could have bought the Betrayal Cloud City set. Now, I must have seen this set so many times in my local Smith's Toy Superstore, and every time I saw it, I always thought to myself, I should buy that, you know, it looks quite cool. I should probably buy that, but I let it go, I let it slip through my fingers, and before I knew it, it, it was retired, and I could no longer buy it. I think at the time it was on sale for around £210 and it's now worth £630. And you know, missing out on these sets definitely does hurt. It cuts pretty deep and I legit lost sleep over these. And I'm sure a lot of you can, can relate to that feeling. So I'm sick of making these mistakes and I've spent the last two weeks building an app that will use historic data to predict the value of sets once they retire. Now to start off this project I first needed a database of Lego sets along with their individual attributes. Now what are these attributes? Well let's take the old fishing store as an example, one of my all time favourite sets. So this set is part of the Lego ideas theme, it has 2057 pieces, it had an RRP of £139.99 or $149.99. If you divide the RRP by the number of pieces, you get the price per piece, which is 6.8 pence or 7.3 cents. It has four minifigures, all of which are exclusive to this set, meaning that they don't appear in any other set. In fact, interestingly, the fisherman minifigure from this set sells for around £30 on Bricklink. I'm not sure why that is, because um, you know it doesn't really seem that special, but it does sell for that much. Alongside those minifigures it has 10 animal pieces. Animal pieces are normally worth more than regular pieces. For example, this set has three seagull pieces which are worth £3 each. This set was released in September 2017 and retired in December 2018, which gives it a relatively short shelf life of one year and four months. And finally, it's not a licensed set. In total there we have nine data points which really helps us to build up a detailed model or a blueprint of this set and it helps us to distinguish it from other sets that LEGO has made. Once I'd compiled this information for every set that had been released since the start of 2018, I now had a database with just under 3,000 entries and in total 27,000 individual attributes. I also collected month by month sales data for all of these sets so I now had a large data set I could work with. Now my aim was to use this data to see if I could spot any patterns that might indicate why some sets rose in value more once they retired than other sets had and really I'm just trying to find correlations be that a positive correlation or a negative correlation between these individual attributes and future value because if I can work that out then I can apply that to the sets that LEGO currently makes, that are currently active, and that should tell me what to invest in right now. Right, we've covered the theory side, now let's see it in action and break down how it works. So I'm going to swap out the old fishing store for the Coruscant Guard gunship. This is a Star Wars set that is currently active, it was released in August 2023 and is due to retire at the end of 2024. So, as I said, it's part of the Star Wars theme, and if you compare it against other Star Wars sets that recently retired, those sets increased by an average of 59% two years after they'd retired. It costs £129.99 or $139.99. Once again, if you compare this with Star Wars sets with a similar RRP, 
on average, they went up 14.7%. It has 1,083 pieces. This indicates an increase of 8.7%. It has a price per piece of 12 pence or 13 cents, which again, sets which had a similar price per piece, you know, in that range, they went up 40% after two years. It has five minifigures. All of those are exclusive, like the old fishing store. Sadly, it has no animals. Like I said, it was released in September 2023 and is due to retire at the end of this year, which again gives it a pretty short shelf life of one year and four months. In fact, when comparing this against sets, I found one set that had a similar shelf life, which was the Betrayal at Cloud City set I mentioned earlier. Now this set, after two years, had gone up 133%. So, so that's a pretty big positive correlation between that attribute and future value. And finally, it is a licensed set, but then again, all Star Wars sets are licensed, so we can kind of just disregard that check. So by doing these comparisons to sets that have recently retired, we now have a bunch of ROI percentages that are linking these attributes to future value. And here's the exciting bit. If we take the average of all of those figures, we get 51.5. So by my calculations, two years after this set retires, I should be looking at a 51.5% return on investment. If I plot this on a graph, this equates to £137. And if I also add the high and low percentages that I mentioned earlier, that gives a range of £99 to £209. So really, in the two years after this set, set retires, it should be worth something in that range. And from my experience buying and selling Lego and my knowledge of the market, that actually does sound pretty accurate. Right, here's a million dollar question, which I'm sure you want to know. So I ran this script on every set Lego currently makes and the top three sets that came back, which you know, are, are indicating that these sets will give the highest return on investment after they've retired are, in third place, you have the Arctic Snowmobile, which is a city set. And this one kind of shocked me a little bit because um, maybe it's because it's a small set and, you know, Small sets can easily double in price because you're not paying that much more for them like re relatively. So this was estimated at a 101% return on investment. In second place, we had the Ford Mustang Dark Horse, which is a speed champion set. Again, this was given a 101% return on investment after two years. And the top of the list was the Audi e-tron Quattro set, which is again is another speed champion set. This was giving a 104% return on investment. In fact, most of the top 10 were actually speed champion sets. And from my experience buying and selling Lego, these were actually the sets that I got the best margin on. They very quickly doubled in price after they, they'd retired. So there you have it. I'm actually really, really excited about this tool and the potential it has. I'm going to keep working on improving it. But if you have any feedback for me or any, any suggestions, please do let me know in the comments section. Now, a quick disclaimer, obviously, don't go out and buy the sets I mentioned. You know, this tool is untested and it's kind of just more of a guideline, really. So always do your own research before buying any Lego set. But if you do want to use it, you can use it at brickranker.com, which is a website I built and I run. It's a site for tracking the value of sets and minifigures and you know, getting Lego news. We've got investment articles on there. You can catalog your own sets and minifigures and track their value over time. So if you want to use it, just enter a set number in the search bar at the top of the page. Obviously it has to be a currently active set. Once you're on the set page, on the right hand side, I made this fancy little box that gives the return on investment estimation. And it gives you a nice little graph indicating the value it might be worth. That brings me to the end of this video. If you did enjoy it, please do leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed this content. Once again, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.